So the irony about this video <laughs> is that we were looking for a goatee player to showcase how powerful this deck is. And ironically for my TCG channel, one of my editors just so happens to be the goatee god here. So he sent us a replay, which is going to be extremely insane. As insane as he edits. For the people that do not know, goatee is a strategy that is built on banishing fish monsters and then returning them to your side of the field on the next standby phase, allowing you to synchro summon on your opponent's turn. Now, I know what you guys are probably saying. Goatee is supposed to be spelled fish because that's how it is phonetically. But unfortunately, Konami fumbled the bag on this and announced that it was goatee and not fish. But that's here and over there. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Trey is going to open up Supe Dustwalker. Double evenly matched in infinite impermanence. This does not seem like a good hand whatsoever. But let's go ahead and start off and see how he does it. He uses the effect of Supe to discard one card to be able to summon itself and Supe from the deck. And now he's going to be able to synchro summon. With those two monsters, he's going to synchro summon to Arium Pulse, the Serpent of Goatee. Now, apologize ahead of time. I am going to butcher these cards' names, but they're really, really awesome cards. If this card is Synchro Summon, you can banish one level 6 or lower fish monster from your deck. And then if it's sent to the graveyard as Synchro Material, you can target one fish monster in your graveyard, banish that target. Then you can add one fish monster with an equal level from your deck to your hand. This card is extremely important for the deck, as not only as it turns your bad hands into amazing hands, it also allows you to get into the goatee cards you needed. With that, we were able to banish Shift from our deck, and set to it passed. It's going to be a really, really shaky hand as it seems. But let's see how our opponent, Kyranor, is going to respond. On his turn, the effect of Shift will activate the summon itself, and our opponent will respond by using Branded Opening to summon Alibur. And now they're going to use Alibur's effect to be able to get Branded Fusion. Okay, so we're going against a Branded deck. They're then going to go again, Albion, their Retribution, to be able to draw a card, and now use Branded Fusion, sending Fallen Albas and Tier Limits Merly. So it seems to be a branded tier limit deck they'll summon lubellion using the effect sending gajito we'll use infinite impermanence on that lubellion here and now the effect of their merly in the graveyard could activate if they decide to they're going to activate ajito and merly to send cards and then kelbic to send cards again holy so there's going to be 10 cards sent from the deck to the graveyard and a merly fuse Merly is going to go ahead and fusion summon into tier limits Kid Kalos. Shadow All Dragon targets the Imperm. Shiren will fuse again. Kid Kalos will add. And we're going to activate our phase down Infinite Impermanence because this is actually just to pause it right here. If you guys have cards like Infinite Impermanence or Effect Veiler and you're wondering what's the best time to stop tier limits, using those on tier limit Kid Kalos is literally like a W. It's a walking W to be able to not only negate the search effect, but also prevent it from sending itself to the graveyard and getting five more cards and summoning a tier limit. Really, really powerful, but let's carry on. We'll then use Shift's effect as Chain Link 5 to Synchro Summon. So Shift will fusion our Synchro Summon with our Ariampos. We are going to make a Scon the Bicorn Unicorn. Oh my God, this is so... The Bicorn Goatee. What this card does, if it's Synchro Summon, you can target one fish monster you control and one card your opponent controls and banish them. That seems really bad, but this card has another effect. If it's banished, you can banish one fish monster from your graveyard to special summon this card. So it can banish itself or any other fish monsters to trigger their effects on the next turn and summon itself back to the side of the field by banishing other fish monsters, which will trigger those effects. So we negate the Kid Kalos, but now he'll fuse with the Shiren, the Rhino Heart, and the Kid Kalos into a Tier Limits Kaleido Heart. He's going to attempt to use the Kaleido Heart to be able to get rid of our Bicorn, but we're going to use Ariampo. Since it was sent to the graveyard, we can target one Fish Monster in our graveyard to add. And then Ascon will banish itself and the Tier Limits Kaleido Heart. They'll then use Medora in response. They're going to shuffle in our Arian Post. That is a weakness to the deck. This deck doesn't necessarily rely on the graveyard, but there are times where you want to put a ton of fish monsters in the graveyard to banish for your goatee effects. And if you can shuffle those cards in with the Ashizu Shufflers, well, that's just not always what we want to see. So shuffle in our Arian Post, which prevents us from the search, but he will lose his Kaleido Heart. And we get to use our Bicorn to banish shift to summon itself back to the side of the field 
that forces our opponent to set two cards face down and pass his turn. So as you can see, guys, that actually was crazy how this deck managed from just one card in hand, one interaction and two infinite impermanents to be able to synchro summon twice on the opponent's turn and disrupt them. Let's see what happens next. Trey is going to draw a beautiful princess because Shift was banished. It'll summon itself. Lifeless Leech will then banish itself to be able to target three fish monsters in the graveyard, shuffle them, and then draw a card. And now we're going to synchro summon with Ascon and Shift. We're going to make Sword Soul Shingi, which if you guys know about Shingi, anytime cards are banished, this card is just ridiculous. We'll use Betunaful to summon Lifeless Leech, and since a card was banished, we'll use Leech and Shingi. Our opponent's going to respond with Branded Banishment. Okay. So with Branded Banishment, they'll be able to special summon Alibur and then Fusion Summon. Using Lubellion and their Alibur, they're going to make a Masquerade. I, I don't see how that's going to do anything because Shingen could just banish the Masquerade and... Oh my god. That was huge value. We got rid of the Keldo too? Oh yes. that That's really good right now. We'll also be able to send a... Um, Zep to our graveyard. Use Lifeless Leech to attack over Shadal Beast. That'll get him two cards into the hand, discarding a Kelbic. And now Kelbic will force us to mill again. Then he gets his Tier Limage uh, card to be able to add up Havnus. And then he'll activate Branded Fusion to add, or Branded Retribution to add Branded Fusion. So he's still playing. He's definitely still in this game and playing Yu Gi Oh! But let's go ahead and look at our board. We have a 4,000 attack Shinging on our side of the field. That card is huge. It allows us to be able to banish cards on our opponent's side of the field and graveyard once per turn. We also have evenly matched, which if our opponent does decide to break our board, we could evenly match them. Lifeless Leech in the graveyard, but we also have Shift Banish and potential other goatee monsters that we'll want to banish to be able to gain their effects. So we're actually in a really, really good spot. Both players still are. Kyra is going to go ahead and start his turn. We're going to get Shift back to our side of the field. They'll activate Pirulino here to be able to get Tier Limit Shiren. And now Tier Limit Shiren, they'll send the Havnus to the graveyard to summon Shiren. Using Havnus effect to fuse. Holy yo. Shiren and Havnus will be able to make Tier Limit Kinkalos here. And now we'll use Pirulino to destroy the evenly matched phase down. He doesn't know exactly what it is. In response to the Kinkalos and the Pirulino, we'll activate the effect of Shift to Synchro Summon. So we're going to use these two monsters. Probably go back into Ariampos. Yes. We're going to make Ariampos again. And as you guys know, this card is nor This is the play starter for the entire deck. It's actually really crazy. It allows us to banish a... Oh my god. Snopios. Holy, I'm so bad at this. And Snopios actually has a great effect. It allows us to banish one fish monster in the graveyard to add it to the hand when it's banished. So we'll banish Zep to be able to add itself. It also has a quick effect to summon. And now since Zep was banished, since Zep was banished, it immediately gets to summon itself and it allows us to synchro summon as all of them do. All of the tuners allow us to synchro summon on our opponent's turn. We're going to make an Ascon again, trying to get rid of this Kid Kalos. Now, we'll use Ariampos to be able to banish to search. We'll use Ascon to be able to banish to banish in our field spell card. This card's actually crazy too. If it's ever in the graveyard, which means if our opponent is using cards like Kelbic to Ajito to fuel our graveyard, we can actually use it to banish one of our fish monsters to add it to the hand. So not too many field spell cards have a way to get into our hand to be able to create so much chaos for us. So we'll also banish Zep and add Paces. And now Bicorn will banish Lifeless Leaffish to summon itself back to the side of the field. Our opponent will then normal summon Owlbur. Keep in mind, we have not used the effect of Shingen just yet. They'll go Branded Fusion, sending Fallen Albas and Tier Limits Murley to the graveyard. So they're going to make some plays here. Okay, they make their second Lubellion. They're going to use the effect of Murley here, discarding a Murley and Lubellion. We're going to act, we're going to respond by using Snopios. Now that's interesting that we banished from the hand, but we banished the Paces and the Zep here. Our opponent is going to use Branded Red in response, adding Albas to the hand. So are they going for a Guardian Chimera play, probably? They'll get Fallen Albas to their hand, and now they'll fuse with the Tragedy and the Lubellian. I see. They're going to make Drago Stapelia here. Now Resolving will be able to summon Snoopios. Lubellian will still be able to fuse. It'll use Kick Kalos and Albas. That is a fusion monster, so we can make Mirror Jade here and get our Kick Kalos back. 
Barely then fuses with King of the Swamp? Holy yo! This man came to cook today! His board is actually incredible. Unfortunately for him, Xing Ying does activate because a card was banished. And Snoopy else will activate. What it does is that it can target one face-up card on the field, and then that card gets banished when it leaves the field. Seems like a really bad effect, but it's actually underrated. He'll use Draco Stapelio on our Xing Ying. That was really, really smart that he made Draco Stapelio. And Tragedy will allow him to add an Ab Liptum. So he's definitely gearing up for a huge play. He'll then Mirror Jade the Albion to get rid of our Xing Ying, go into battle phase, and then attack over our monsters. Okay, keep in mind, Snoopyos gets banished because it did target itself. Our opponent will put us down to 4,000 life points. We're even. Albion has set a branded opening, so no more branded and reds for him. And as you can see, we're down to two cards. We're going against a scary board. Mirror J might not be able to activate its effect this turn, but next turn it's live. On top of that, it can send other cards or uh, monsters like Albion to the grave to continuously get up resources and wipe our entire board when it's gotten rid of. Drago Stapelia and Rukalos are formidable disruptions, but even if he can shuffle cards back into his deck, which he normally can, Perlino is another form of disruption and a face down branded opening. We're going to start our turn by summoning our shift to our side of the field and our paces. We'll then normal summon Butinful Princess, using its effect to be able to summon Seep. Next, we'll activate our field spell, which is really important. Our opponent will shotgun Drago Stapelia. Huh? What? If a fish monster is banished, you can spell summon his card from your hand. Do the next stand by face after his banished, you can target one goatee. I think that was a mistake. This was actually a really intense matchup. But I think, oh no, it does make sense. He made it level one. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So man's is smart. He's actually smart, not a mistake. He makes it level one so we can't synchro into six. We're going to link with our seat and our paces into Abyss Keeper. Trigger the effect of our most distant, deepest goatee. Getting our shift to our hand, but also triggering the effect of our Bicon. Bicorn. Our opponent will use our Rukalos to negate our Bicorn. But we'll still be able to get our Snoopios. We'll banish a monster from the graveyard to be able to add it to the hand. Abyss Keeper will then banish the shift to banish the Rukalos. We'll summon Silent Angler and then pass. I think that our opponent's in a really bad spot because... Right now, we'll be able to get the effect of shift. We'll be able to get the effect of paces. We have Snoopios in hand. We're actually like, yo, we are playing with one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! And we're keeping up at a consistent pace. Cairo Nair goes ahead and draws. We activate the effect of our shift. It summons itself. Keep in mind, both Dragon Stapelia and Mirror Jade are live here. He'll normal summon Fallen Albaz. We'll chain the effect of paces. He'll use Dragon Stapelia. We'll use shift in response. Our opponent will then Mirror Jade our shift. Well, then Snoopy Oso, did we banish a Zep? Holy! Holy! Yo, Zep right here, Bicorn right here. Oh, you guys are going to finally see it. We're probably going to summon Goaty of the Deep Beyond, which will banish all cards on the field and literally just win the game here. It's going to be... Doesn't it gain 500 attack too? Holy! 500 attack. Bro, this thing can be... Banish monsters? This thing's coming out at 8,000 attack. It, it's coming out at at least 8,000 attack. Resolve, Snoopyos will summon itself to the side of the field. Mirror Jade will banish the shift, which does nothing. Paces will be negated. Bicon will banish seat. Zep will summon itself. Oh yeah, we're definitely going for it. Oh yeah, so he, he scoops early because we were going to summon our big daddy goatee monster of the deep beyond that banishes all cards in the field, is a huge attack monster. Probably wouldn't have used the banish effect because we had enough to go for game. Now, fortunately enough, I actually do have the deck profile of this deck and I'll be able to show it to you right now. So jumping on in into Trey's deck list, there's one Supe, two beautiful, beautiful princess, three Maxi, two Paces, three of, this isn't Zep, this is the other one. Ah, oh, the one that banishes from the graveyard, I forget its name. Holy, I wish we had actually indicators to be able to see what is what. But that's the one that you guys seen so many times. Two Zep, uh, two Silent Angler, two Lifeless Leech, one Seep, three copies of the Supe Don Walker, three copies of the Abyss Shark, 
two dimensional shift, a really good card against tier limit, two Snoopios, one Gold Sark, one one for one, one Pot of Prosperity, two of the Field Spell, which is really, really good, two Call by the Grave, one Cross Out Designator, three uh, evenly matched, three Infinite Impermanence. Then for the extra deck, there's two copies of Arian Post, one copy of Stardust Dragon. That's really interesting, but I guess you can summon it off your Excel Stardust Synchron. White Orwell is a card that you guys didn't get to see. It's a blowout Yu-Gi-Oh card. Two Pinecorn, one Stardust Satellite Warrior. <laughs> this is actually a really cool combo where you can summon this on your opponent's turn, use this effect to be able to Synchro Summon into this and destroy multiple cards. Put it on the floor, one Shinging, two Godi of the Deep Beyond, one Abyss Dweller, one um kraken and then one abyss keeper that's pretty much all that i have i have to give that game squamatis it is easily a five out of five squamata game trey thank you so much for sharing that and of course if you guys want to see more amazing content if you want to see more goatee content go ahead and let me know and post down below in the comment section as well as follow the rules if you have a game as exciting as this that you want to share i'll catch you on the next one